I'm going to talk about the debates. Debates, because let's face it, they're not really debates. I used to always watch the debates. I used to enjoy the debates. I didn't think that they, you know, they ever gave us an example, oh, this person should or shouldn't be president. But you got to see if the person looked presidential. I think that was something. But that's about all that's left. Maybe because of a hyper-partisanship in, in the country, they're, they're just totally useless. I mean, I turned off the Trump-Biden first debate, I guess after about 35 minutes. I, I just couldn't, I couldn't take it anymore. They were, weren't really addressing questions. Uh, you know, it, it just was, it seemed like a waste of time. And I, I had it on record. So I figured if anything really big happened, I could go back and watch it. I'd see what happened afterwards. And it's the same, the, the vice presidential debate the other night I think I turned it off after about 20 minutes because they were just, no matter what the question was, they were just coming out with their talking points. And on the part of the Democrats in both the debates, they weren't even, they wouldn't even try or get close to answer questions, you know? Are, are you going to stack the Supreme Court? You know, we're not going to say. You're going to stack the Supreme Court? We're not going to say. What about fracking? You know, oh, 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 yeah, yeah, no, we're, we're, we're going to keep fracking. But it says in your on your website that you're not. Well, you know, blah, 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 blah. It's just like, what's the point? And, and after the first debate, when he was asked about, Joe Biden was asked about the Green New Deal, and he said, you know, that, that he doesn't follow that. It, you know, it's on the campaign website that they do. And I thought for sure it'd be taken down. And it wasn't, it was still up there. And the other night they asked uh, Harris about it. And she said, no, we know we're not supporting that either, but it's still there. I mean, this lying? I mean, what's going on? So I, you know, I just shut them down. The other problem I'm having with the debates are the moderators. I mean, you look at the three moderators so far. Chris Wallace, okay, well, Chris is from Fox News, but everybody who watches Fox News thinks that Chris Wallace should, should probably be over on CNN or MSNBC. I mean, Chris Wallace is a guy who a couple of years ago said that Donald Trump was the biggest threat to uh, press freedoms in this country we've ever had, you know, since the founding. I mean, how can you say this guy is an unbiased moderator? And, you know, I, I, I didn't like his moderation. I mean, he, he said he was going to be invisible. That would be a successful debate if he was an invisible moderator. He wasn't. He was, you know, on, on both of them, but, you know, mostly Trump. But he was hardly invisible. The second moderator, Ann Page, okay, she seemed maybe a little better. But, you know, I, I checked her out. She's got a book coming out. I think in March, you can see it on pre-order on Amazon, she's written a biography of Madam Speaker. It's a biography of Nancy Pelosi. I mean, and, and this woman's going to moderate the debate? And she wrote another book years ago on, on uh, uh, George Bush's wife, uh, Barbara Bush. So she's written about a Republican, but she's also written about two women. And here you got a guy and a woman. And, and it's just, you know, and, and the Bushes hate hate Trump too. So, I mean, it's, it just looks like it's all stacked. The deck is stacked. And the next guy, Scully from uh, C-SPAN, who's supposed to moderate the next debate, I mean, it turns out that he worked for both uh, as an intern for Senators Biden and Ted Kennedy. Now, you know, think about that for a minute. How, how can this guy get picked? Could, could you imagine the commission picking a journalist who got his start working, say, in public relations uh, for the Trump Organization. Imagine, you know, this, this hypothetical journalist who started working as, a, as an intern in the public relations office of a Trump Organization, and then after he left there, he worked for Senator Ted Cruz. I mean, can you imagine them putting him on as a moderator? No, it would never happen. It would never happen. They'd say, oh, he's biased, he's pro-Trump. But they got a guy who's basically the exact opposite of that. But they're not saying, well, he's, he's going to be, you know, a biased for, for Joe Biden. I mean, this, this is absurd. I mean, what, what's the point of this exercise? Who are the people on this commission? Who are the Republicans on this commission? Why are they agreeing to this stuff? I mean, the whole commission was supposed to be, you know, the, the two parties accept rules and then the commission sort of executes them. But now you have the commission telling the parties, you know, you're going to just do a virtual one. But that's not how it's supposed to work. And I don't blame the Trump administration for saying, you know, we're not going to participate. I mean, I understand it's all wrapped in this COVID thing. But by the time at that point, you know, Trump's 
either going to be back in the hospital or he's not going to be dangerous. And they can, they can take care of that and put the piece of plexiglass back. They got it already made. They just have to ship it to the next site and stick it there and separate them a little further apart. They bring them together with the cameras anyway. What the hell's the point? They, they could be, you know, uh, much further apart. It's not going to pose any danger, you know, to p poor Joe Biden. I mean, they know what this is about. This is just an excuse to get him out there where they can feed him information and, and have, you know, screens prompting him on answers and stuff like that, which is what he usually does. That's what he needs. I think he was wired for the last time. They said, oh, no, it was a crease in his shirt. You got, you know, a shirt with this big black line running down. I don't think it's a, a crease that showed up in the camera. Uh, you know, they were cheating. And I don't, I don't trust these people at all. And and you look, you look at these things, and I said, why, why, why should they, not just why should Trump bother to debate Biden again? I mean, what the hell are they going to do? I mean, Biden's not going to answer any questions that are thrown at him. The only person who's going to try to address questions is going to be, you know, the, the president. And why bother? Why bother? We know, you know, if you think Trump's presidential, you already think it. Nobody's going to change their mind on that. And if you think Biden's presidential, you know, they're going to shoot him full of amphetamines or something and, uh, you know, put him out there and he'll, you know, go along and won't answer anything. So I don't really see a point to it. It's just a waste of time. And it's increasingly frustrating. You know, we, like last night, I mean, they have, what do they start off with? COVID-19. Okay, well, uh, was it last night? Yeah, the vice presidential debate. And COVID-19, that's a big issue. And then I'm moving along and when, you know, climate change. I mean, come on, I mean, our cities are in turmoil. You know, stuff's happening all over the world. China, we get to, to China. And what does, what's this page say? What about China? China is an important country, could be a partner in our fight against climate change. So now they're going to talk about China, but it's all framed within this, this framework of climate change. I mean, this is just absurd. It's just, it's just a total waste of time. I don't even, you know, if, if I watched 40 minutes the first time, 20 minutes the second time, the next time I'm probably not even going to watch. I'll record it. And if, you know, something happens big, I can go back and check it out. But it's gotten to the point where something that I used to look forward to, I, you know, I can remember watching Jimmy Carter debate, you know, all the way back in the 70s. But I have watched debates for decades. And I always watch the whole debate. And anymore, it's just like click, click, click. It's just a question of when do I click it off? Because the, the moderators suck. The moderators are, are bad. The format sucks, and and neither candidate. All they do is they just use whatever whatever the topic is, and then have their ready-made position pieces, and they just spurt them out. And you know, usually if it's two minutes, they spurt them out in about two minutes and forty-five seconds, uh, which is you know an old technique. I remember when I was taking my PhD oral exams. And I asked my, my mentor, Professor Russell Wagley, I said, what do I do with the questions? I tried to keep it short. He said, no, 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 no. He said, if you get asked a question that you really don't know much about, give it a really short answer. If they ask you a question, you know a lot about it. He said, picture it's rugby. He said, pick up the ball and keep running with it until somebody tackles you. And, and that seems to be the philosophy that, that they're taking uh, in these debates, you know, this one, I can talk about this one. I, I have a lot, lot to say. So they pick up the ball and they keep running until the moderator, you know, tackles them or threatens to cut off their mic. And uh, yeah, it, it's just, it's just a waste of time. I mean, I really don't see anything in it anymore. And that's a shame. And I think the reason it's gotten like that is because they've let it get like that. I think this whole commission set up is a waste of time. Uh, the, the, the format set up is a waste of time. I mean, no debating team would go out there and have a two minute, two minute thing. I mean, it's a two minute night and one minute response. I mean, it, it just doesn't make any sense. And they try to get away with that with the first debate. But, you know, Trump and Biden really didn't cooperate. And uh, you know, Wallace just lost control of the debate. It was a horrible debate. It's one of the worst I've ever seen. Now, Having said all that, you know, who do I think has been winning these debates? That's a very interesting question. If you look at the people on the right, they say that, you know, Biden 
and uh, Pence, uh, I mean, people on the right, that Biden and Harris lost. And people on the left say Trump and Pence lost. Well, that's to be expected. And even when I look at the debates, because I think more like Mike Pence, or I think more like Donald Trump, they're going to resonate more with me. So in my mind, it's going to look like they won. And the same thing's happening if somebody's on the left, then when they're watching, then things Biden says and Harris says is going to resonate more for them. So you, you can't go by that. But there are a couple of things that I think tell me about who's winning the debate. One of the things, like for example, the Biden uh, Trump first debate, you had that uh, poll that they did on uh, Telemundo. I guess people who watch him, and I assume they were watching in Spanish, they may not be Hispanic, maybe they're just people who like to watch Spanish language television, I don't know. But it was like overwhelmingly in favor of Trump. And, and that was surprising. I didn't expect that. And they had another one the other night with uh, Harrison Pence, and it was the same thing. I think Mike Pence got like 75, 77% positive. You know, they three quarters of the people basically thought Mike Pence had won. And what was interesting and telling to me was that, you know, I, I saw that and, I, and then I went to post it and then I went back to it and it was gone. Tell them I had taken it down. I mean, it disappeared. And I thought, well, what's the, why? Why is this happening? Because you know, they don't like the result. So basically they do a poll, they don't get the result they want, you delete it. And, and that's what they did. Now that tells me that something's going on in the Hispanic community that the left doesn't like because they're, they're trying to suppress these things. I mean, they're on scientific polls. It's just a question of who's watching. But who else can you ask who won the debate except people who are watching? It's not like you're doing a scientific sample because you, you can't sample people who don't watch the debate. You can only do people who do watch the debate. And there's always a possibility it was crashed by one side or the other. But, you know, still, it, it tells me something. The other thing with the, uh, the Pence-Harris debate that suggests, I think, that he did win is there's a lot today coming out where they're attacking him for mansplaining or being, you know, a sexist or misogynist or something, taking, you know, or taking advantage of her because she's a woman or not treating her the right way or blah, 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 blah. Well, that tells me they lost. Because if, if they really believed that Senator Harris had cleaned Vice President Pence's clock, they wouldn't need to talk about mansplaining. They wouldn't need to talk about any of these other gender or sex related things. They would just say, she cleaned his clock. She beat him. You know, she put him down. He, she's a better debater. And the fact that they're not saying those things, they're, they're saying those, but they're also bringing up all this other stuff tells me that she didn't really do that well. And I think uh, something else that, that I saw was from Frank Luntz, who had, I think he had, uh, if I remember correctly, I could be wrong. If, if you know I'm wrong, point it out in the comments. But I think he had a bunch of undec undecideds, as best as you can trust people to be what they claim to be. And at the end, the majority of them went for Pence. Not because he made better debating points or anything, but primarily they thought he looked more presidential than she did. And, you know, there were a lot of people pointed out, I saw it on Twitter, where they were saying, you know, she's, she's look, making faces and kind of smirking and smiling and while he's talking and they got them on that split screen. And when it, they used to be separate, but they were all in the same shot, but they were farther away. You know, it's one thing, but when they're split screen, because they got them further apart, because they got to have those partitions there. And they, and they put the two screens together and it's like they're right next to each other and she's making faces at him. It's not a good look. And I don't think it looks presidential. Uh, and I guess a lot of other people didn't too. So that's another tell that you know, suggests to me. So I think it, overall so far, you know, I, I would conclude that probably the Trump campaign was helped by the two debates that we've had so far. And I think that would continue to be the trend if they continue to have debates. But I really don't know that it's worthwhile because I don't think we're going to learn anything. I mean, unless, you know, Joe has a lapse or, or you know, Trump goes into a coughing fit or something like that. You know, I, I don't know what we're going to learn. They're, they won't answer questions. They're just not 
answering questions, especially the Democrats, and to a, to a great extent, the Trump campaign too. They just, you know, whatever the topic is, they've got their, their idea fixed. They've got to get their speech out in, in two minutes and 30 seconds. And that's it. And it's all ready. But, you know, overall, to me, I, I think, yeah, I think the Republicans have done better than the, the Democrats. I don't know that that means anything. So what? You know, so, so what, what comes out of these debates? I really don't know. What were your observations on the debate? Let me know in a comment. If you have anything to say about anything I said here, let me know about that in a comment as well. And if you can, and you got something out of the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the channel. That's the best way to let me know if people are supporting the channel. I'm not talking about money here. I'm nowhere near monetization. I just, it's nice to know when you put out the effort that, you know, you're picking up subscriptions. Uh, share the video with your friends. Hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. And until then, stand tall, confront the resistance, and as it says in the corner here in Korean, maybe it's over here. Yeah, I think it's over here. I always get my directions mixed up when I'm filming. My apologies. Keep fighting.